good afternoon, it's Katie. We interrupt this solitary game of pool to tell you a little more on Chestermere. And just like these balls I'm breaking, things are breaking up in Chestermere at a very rapid rate. And from what I looked at on that, um, what I heard in their video that I covered is that they're having something today. There's another town hall meeting. So I hope to capture that as well. So please enjoy, leave a thumb, comment, subscribe, share. This is how we beat the algorithm. I often send out my YouTube videos on Messenger. I'm not on Facebook anymore, but I kept on Messenger and I'll send them out. But I'm growing, which is yay, awesome. But my time is getting limited. So I'm gonna ask you to please um, hit the bell. Hit the bell, hit the notifications so you don't miss any of my stories. I'm just gonna have to stop sending it out and hope for it just to carry on organically. And I really appreciate your time and your help and your support and everyone that's cheering along with me. Okay, here it is, enjoy. I'll get you some more soon. Hi everybody, good evening. It's Selena Paley, I'm live from Calgary, Alberta tonight. I'm at the Riviera Plaza and Conference Center where we just listened to just well over three hours of presentations from former Mayor Jeff Colvin and Councillors Mel Fote, uh, Blaine Funk and Stephen Hanley. Um, again, talking about the situation that they find themselves in, um, Municipal Affairs Minister Rick McIver uh, has come in and removed these four elected officials from office, and we're trying to get to the bottom of why. Why is it that around every turn, Rick has cancelled investigations, and he refuses to communicate and or cooperate with these gentlemen, um, and his sort of knee-jerk reaction to the allegations from the council of Chestermere that there was some corruption involved prior to them taking off this uh, with respect to the former mayor Marshall Chalmers who we now have learned is the uh, brother-in-law of Rick McIver. So the story gets uh, pretty deep and convoluted. Um, there's a lot of questions unanswered still. Tonight I'm going to talk with Stephen Hanley, who was a former counselor at Chestermere. I'm just going to grab him here. Again, you guys, sorry about the sound <laughs> before. I'll be right back. Stephen, can I grab you? Sorry, ladies. I have to steal Stan. Stephen. Right here. Sorry, I don't mean to grab you there, but um, we haven't had a chance to chat with you yet. Um, you know, I know a lot of people are interested in this financial aspect that went on, that you were able to uncover some financial irregularities, quite a few actually, during your tenure, um, you know, uh, as a counselor, CAO. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your background? What makes you qualified um, in the financial aspect of all of this? Uh, okay. Uh in my previous life, I was the senior financial partner for Canadian National Railways. Now, railways have a lot of similarities to municipalities. Railways maintain their own infrastructure. Railways have their own police force. Railways have their own mechanical organizations. It's like little cities. So I'm used to very long-term assets. And I'm used to a large organization. And without proper and effective controls, can go easily as a uh, right. Uh, one of the things people asked tonight was about uh, the controls in a city. Uh, in private industry, if you're a publicly traded company, like governments have set up uh, what they call Sarbanes-Oxley Oxley rules, right? So there's processes and controls for everything that have to be audited, that boost in, uh, investors' shareholders' confidence, right? Uh, so, and, and that was done, but the government does not apply any of those rules to themselves. Those are the types of things that, like, for arrive can, right? Arrive can would it never have happened if they had those kind of rules in place. <laughs> Shocking, eh? I can't help but see the similarities between the cover up uh, with the information at arrive scam. I know I'm, I'm just it's just used to saying that now. Um, you know how Justin Trudeau and his government made a concerted attempts to cover up the information, and not only that, twenty million dollars paid to a company that did no work. You know we're we're hearing a lot of the same sort of situation happening here: inflated prices to companies that did they actually do any of the work. Uh, how do you account for these discrepancies? And so far, nothing has been brought to the table. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. And what I what I saw when I first got into the city was the lack of controls. Uh, they don't even budget on a monthly basis, right? Uh, 
which doesn't make any sense. So how do you predict cash flow? Why can't, can you tell us a little bit about the situation um, of the office, the financials and the information? Was it available to you when you took office? What was this? What was the state of affairs at that time? All that was available at that point in time was the financial statements. Now, the financial statements, if you're experienced, you can read things. But also, being the finance guy, people would come to you for money. They have projects. They would have things. And you, be, you get a, a level of skepticism. You know what they know that they're not telling you, and you ask the questions, right? So you, you follow, because everyone wants to give you a sales job of why what they're doing is so wonderful and so important, right? And your due diligence would be investigating to make sure that you cross all your T's and dot your I's. Uh, and there's a, a failure uh, by administration to come back, because as the spender, you always have an option to say, no, I'm not going to do this. Like when the dog park issue came up, right? For four hundred and fifty thousand dollars, that's the lowest bid. So give the award the contract at the lowest bid. How about no? It's not a realistic use of our money. It's not valid, uh, and, and you're, it's it causes more questions on the process. Of, Let's talk, speaking of investigations, I mean, you know, Jeff and you guys, you have uh, had several attempts to, tried to make several attempts to launch investigations when you were working in the city. Rick has successfully shut all of them down. He is now um, initiating his own from the Municipal Affairs Office. He's calling it a municipal inspection. It's not going through the courts. It's not part of the public record. It's not anything to do with uh, le anything legal, really. It's just to satisfy what exactly, I'm not sure. Um, further to that, he's only looking at October 18th, 2021 to December 4th, 2023. He's not looking at any inconsistencies in the financials prior to your um, taking office. Do you have any concerns over that? Well, it, it's, it sounds funny, because actually what should happen as a result of it is a lot of the same issues that we talked about today, like paying out severances to people right, without authority of counsel, should show up in his forensic audit, because that is a, a big no-no by administration, right? But is that going to go? Uh, or what are the types of things? Because remember, counsel just makes decisions. Administration carries out all the work, right? What did we actually do? Uh, so if he finds anything, it, to me it seems more like a fishing expedition. Uh, every time, you know, he, it's like his, his questions or his concerns with our directives. We would answer his questions or his concerns, but he wouldn't like to answer. Or then he would come up with new information or new data or, right? And it became very evident that, you know, he was, we were never going to satisfy the directives to his satisfaction. It's just the dangling of the carrot, you know, follow yeah, the... I'm, yeah. I'm saying, uh, it's easy for you guys to do it. Well, if it's easy for us to do, then if you have a problem with our answer, come back to us with ask clarification but you don't ask for clarification you just go back and hammer the same point over and over again personally um steven i want to know i want a forensic audit on the previous administration that's i mean you guys brought the allegations of uh, mismanagement and corruption missing funds hush money we heard it all tonight um, why is he not doing an investigation what's your speculation on why he won't look at previous years um, uh, my speculation is, I suspect that there are a number of people, there the naysayers in our community, uh, that are involved in some of this, as well as political people that are involved in this, and and I suspect that the plan initially was small town, you can get corruption because there's not as many controls, builds up debt and everything. Eventually, it becomes. Uh, you know, a problem, and then you just amalgamate it into the bigger city. So you take little old Chesmere and amalgamate it into to, uh, to Calgary, right? And it's a, a, a bump on the scale there. No one would ever know, and you would never go back into all of the detail because it's a way of effectively burying it forever. And there's no standardized accounting process. Standardized accounting. Okay, last question for you. I'd appreciate your time tonight. Um, how much do you, were you able to uncover that was taken from taxpayers fraudulently, illegally, what's the word you want to use, I'm not sure, unconventionally and properly, how much do you think uh, in total? One of the things that we saw in our, our C, in our CFO that actually left, that got paid hush money, one of the things that she claimed uh, in her achievements was ta stopping the overtaxing of residents, which was actually, uh, yeah, 
So, and it's there in writing, and you sort of go, oh, this happens, and it compounds. What, one of the things when I first moved to Chestermere uh, is we got to know our neighbors, and our neighbors realized what I had done for a living. So there was lots of problems. It has a checkered past. They asked me to look at all of this, and I said, I looked at it, and I read through it, and I'm going, yeah, you guys had a right to be upset. You just didn't know how to articulate it, right? And you, you didn't understand the ways of the rules of how this actually works. Um, so one of the things that we found is watching council meetings is what they were saying they were doing was not what the underlying paperwork actually did. They would turn around and say, we're lowering taxes when you actually increase taxes. Uh, so we went, my wife and I went through all the, the research. We got all the documentation. We went to uh, the city council, to that prior council. Uh, we showed them all the evidence. Their first question was, who else has this? And we said, nobody, you. It's your job to fix it. We're assuming that, you know, things happen, people make mistakes, then we brought it to our attention. But the problem is it compounds. You were not paid to do this. You did this on your own accord because people were concerned, brought you their concerns, and you took it upon yourself to actually look at the numbers. It's, it's, it's like, I, I had a good career. I have a good uh, retirement. I have a pension. I have an income. I do not need this. This actually messes up my finances because it puts me in a higher tax margin. When I became deputy mayor, they wanted to increase my salary. I said, no, give it to gifts of kindness because it's just going to make my, my, my wow. situation worse. I like him. Right? Uh, but, yeah, so we had gone, we presented it to council, uh, and they were all concerned uh, about what it was. Then we noticed you changing storylines all the time with the CAO. Uh, when I filed my nomination papers, uh, it was within two weeks, I got a cease and desist letter from the city lawyer. I'm not allowed to talk about property taxes or any of the... That's <laughs> why they gave you a cease and desist. Muzzle! Right, so they have a civil discourse policy that basically said any resident who complains or says anything about us, we can bar you from city property. <laughs> okay, so again, what, what do you think the in? number is? Where do we live? Um, are we talking like tens of millions or millions? I, I suspect it's significant amounts of money. You're not going to know until you get back in there and really look at it. Exactly. And and it's the amount of detail. We we touched on a number of things. It's like uh, the lift station 13 started off as an $8 million project, ended up being $24 million. There's all kinds of, all of these things over time. And, and it's, why we were looking at it was not uh, to specifically shine the light on, find somebody who's guilty. It's how were these decisions made? And how do you change the processes and the procedures to ensure if council was sold a bag of goods because that they were told this is the best solution and they believed it, they did what they thought was the right thing. That's fine. But if it was the wrong decision, it was because they weren't informed properly. What were the rules in place to ensure they're informed properly? What were the options? And those are the things that were really our goal. Like Jeff said, it's not our job to be judge and adjudicator of everybody else in the past. It's, yeah, and doing everything by the book. It's do, make sure taxpayers are getting value for their money uh, transparency, long-term uh, uh, financial accountability, right, uh, and sustainability. You you want if you move into a community, you want to make your life there. You want your kids to grow up there. You hopefully your kids will stay there. You do not want something that's set up to self implode at a later point in time because people have been slowly, you know, inching it up over and over again and taking advantage of people. And uh, as Jeff said. Uh, in the, over the last 20 years, there was things where his taxes went up 300%. We went from 3,000 to like 12,000. Question: It's very smart to question. You know, the more that I, you know, see the presentations, and tonight was um, Jeff presenting all of his evidence, so that was very eye-opening too. It's starting to look more and more like the wrong counselors were removed here. Um, you know, I, I think that you were doing a fine job, and that seems to be the consensus here. We're really hoping that you get your office back soon, Stephen. Um, and we thank you very much for this interview tonight, and good luck to you um, going forward. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Have a good night. Okay, very good. Okay, guys, um, whew, lots of information here. There's going to be another town hall for the town members of Chestermere. You guys can sign that petition if you want. You can go out and listen and see Jeff's evidence and talk to these gentlemen, get uh, your questions answered. 
Um, it's going to be April the 3rd at Camp Chestermere. I'll pop the details Ooh, up today. on my page as well. These gentlemen have a give, send, go going right now. I'll give you that information as well because um, they're going to have a legal battle on their hands if this municipal inspection report that comes out um, identifying only the financials during the time they were in office, not Marshall Chalmers, not, you know, the previous administration, because as they say, I think this goes back to previous administration. So, you know, uh, prudently, I think Rick McIver is best to look at all the years, not just this year. <laughs> it just makes him look more guilty and it raises more questions than it provides answers. He don't so, care. Um, if you guys like the content coming to you, I'm going to keep an eye but this on isn't this going story away. see how it develops. Please consider donating to me at Selena Paley reports at gmail.com. I'll also pop that in the description. Thanks so much for joining me tonight, you guys, and stay tuned for more as the story unfolds. Have a great night. Talk to you soon. So that was Selena Paley and she had posted on a Facebook group called Chestermere Uncensored and it's public. I'm not on Facebook and I can see it, but I was a little worried that I wouldn't be able to share the link, so I videotaped the whole thing for you. And now I just want to read this. Uh, someone posted 22 hours ago, ACERT clarifies stance on letter allegations against Airdrie, RCMP, others. The letter was received via fax November 6, 23. No signatures at the bottom to denote who had sent or written the letter. Appears to be written by the city of Chestermere letterhead originating from office of the mayor. A suit said that since the investigations are directed by the director of law enforcement, they cannot take complaints directly from the cover from the public. We did not investigate this matter and therefore did not verify who sent the letter. Discover Airdrie reached out to the city of Chestermere regarding the letter and whether it did originate from any of its offices. But in an emailed statement, officials said they could not comment on the letter as it dealt with RCMP operations and specifically ACERT. In early December, Rick McIver dismissed Chestermere Mayor Jeff Colvin along with Councillor Mel Float, Councillor Blaine Funk, Councillor Stephen Hanley. He was the gentleman uh, that Selena was interviewing as well as three chief administration officers. The dismissal came after the province said the city failed to comply with the supervision of the official administrator, some of the minister's directive that had been in place since March 15th, yet they've provided no evidence to that at all. According to a previous news release by the province, directives were intended to restore good governments to the city of Chestermere, were issued following a municipal inspection, since then, they've continued to be managed in an irregular, improper, improvident manner. While the minister determined that the city has failed to comply with its obligations, he also determined that the dismissal of Councillor Shannon Dean, Sandy Joel Hall Watt, and Councillor Wright Ishnarian was not justified given their efforts to hold council to account and attempt to move council in a more positive direction toward proper government practices and compliance with legislation. Minister McIver previously underlined the directives issued by his predecessor were not onerous and represent the bare minimum that citizens ought to expect from their municipal government. However, after undertaking all reasonable efforts to have the city comply with its obligations, it failed to do so. I don't really want to hear anything he has to say. Um, assigned files to ACERT can be seen on their website. Decisions on investigations by ACERT can be accessed online. The most recent file, which is unrelated to the allegations in the letter that ACERT included, was an investigation regarding Airdrie RCMP last November. And then you'll also find, so it's a great wealth of information if you want to keep following this. Chestermer, Alberta abandons judicial review that cost taxpayers 300 grand. <laughs> Okay. The judicial review, which was an unauthorized initiative from the former CAOs who were also dismissed by the minister of by ministerial order number, blah, 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 cost taxpayers just under 300 grand in legal fees, which expenses were unbudgeted. We prove that governments are wasting our money. Let's simplify everything. Minister McIver removed myself the mayor of Chestermere 
and three councillors, December 4th, 23. McIver is the brother-in-law of ex-Mayor Chalmers, who was being looked into for alleged alleged financial irregularities by the U.S. or by us. Sorry. So McIver took us out. Massive conflict, even though our Chester Mayor Council was the first to find massive wasteful spending and cut taxes by more than 31%, highest ever in the city's history. Not cutting any services, first to investigate and find corruption. Past council ex-Mayor Chalmers lost $7 million in 2020. When our council was elected in 21, we were handed a budget prepared by past council and administration requiring a $4 million residential tax increase and told the city was broke. We said no and reduced it by $4 million, reduced another $4 million with a tax reduction in 22, $8 million total reduction on our first budget. Further, we added $6 million of council initiatives, including $1 million in RCMP back pay, added four new RCMP with vehicles for $1 million, six new firefighters and equipment for $1 million, all in 22. Residents never felt a thing except more money in their pockets. On top of millions in savings at the end of 22, we cut the tax mill rate by 25% more in 23, saving another $4 million. So yeah, he had said they saved 10 to $12 million their time in office. These are facts. If the city was broke and losing money every year, how could we do this? Past councils couldn't do, couldn't do this. We did. We can lower taxes another 30 to 40% and still save money for new recreation. When you stop money from being wasted and diverted for corruption, there's more than enough money. Taxpayers are paying too much. All cities are the same. So is the province. We all pay too much tax. We were elected and saw 100% how city waste taxpayer funds and does not respect them. We changed that. We proved it's possible. It's possible everywhere. We were elected to stop corruption, reduce taxes and wasteful spending. We did exactly that and believe there is still more, tax, more taxes to drop.